Thank you very much, Zash, and uh, good evening to everyone. In a short, in a time available to me, I decided to omit any theorizing of how urban and or spatial sociology addresses the issues of uh, reading, writing, the landscape, how actually the sociological readings of space and uh, places differ from artistic experiences. Of course, there are many different, sometimes, let's go if it works. Uh, there are many different and sometimes competitive theories trying to explain how people constitute the spaces and places, how different human activities are spatially embedded, uh, what are the relations between spatial and social processes, and so on. I'm sure you are familiar with many of these theories. It goes without saying that the spatial formations such as places, landscapes, cities, ur uh, urban structures at large, and so on, are the product, product of the human agency. Uh, and reading places tells us a lot, not only about the spatial formations themselves, but about all, about the societies that produce them. Therefore, reading the space, we read the societies societies that build them. Departing from the relational concept of space as an arrangement of social goods and humans in places, we should know that there is nothing natural in landscape, landscapes and places. They are constituted or written, so to speak, through our eyes and our hands to the human agency to cut it short. But as we observe quite often, and more as a rule than an exception, in writing the space, or as sociologists would say, in pro the process of the constitutional space or production of space, there are many misunderstandings and misreading of spaces, particularly between professionals, such as architects, landscape architect arch architects, and so on, and the people that use the space. Here I must admit that actually I dislike the notion of the people as, in quotation, the user of space. People do not use the spaces and places as they use the cars or house, household appliances or smartphone application for that matter. They habit the space. They live their space. Their spatial experience is not just another sort of user experience, but life experience, linked to the meaning of what they are and how they pursue themselves among other people and in a wider society. Uh, here's the question. Is there for some truth in the notion that uh, the freedom of the architects, as Zashkos pointed out, the freedom of the, of the architect's experience is limited to the freedom of the user experience. That is by the preferences, habits, values of the people that have the space. Sometimes when I was discussing uh, these issues with the colleague architects, I heard the opinion that so-called ordinary people are not entirely capable or able to understand the complexity of their designs. That we have to educate the people how to use and behave in the spatial arrangements architects designed, designed to them. This is a hard version. The, small, the softer version would be that we have to learn together to teach each other how to use the space and so on. This is more modern, more advanced version of this uh, attitude. Unfortunately, the, th the things are much more complicated as we intervene in the places, in the space, is not uh, only visual image and use of so-called functionality of space that are in question, but much more than that. It is the intervention in the symbolic dimension of the people's everyday days, everyday, every, everyday spatial experience. Here we'll, I will take up the case 
Huh? Here you take up the face, uh, the, the, the case, hoping to explain why and how it comes to the failed encounters between the architects and the people that inhabit that leave the space. The case refers to the urban renewal of the Preshern Square, Preshern Turk in Ljubljana. Everyone, for sure, for all of us, uh, for, of you, everyone who only vaguely knows Ljubljana is familiar with this place. It's essentially an iconic place in Ljubljana. And the story goes as follows. I'm afraid, uh, because many of, this, of you m m know this story, but maybe not all the details of it of what I want to, to say about it. In the late 80s uh, the, of the previous century, city administration decided to modernize and replace the old network communal uh, underground infrastructure, such as the water pipes, sewage, electric cables, and so on, at Preshern Square. What the uh, city administration initially attempted for was primarily infrastructural reconstruction. And as a matter of fact, a few, few years earlier, before that, they already removed the personal car transport from the square and connecting streets, uh, and only limited uh, public transport was allowed. Therefore, this infrastructural reconstruction was also a suitable opportunity to transform the square once noisy and overcrowded in, uh, in uh, crossroads to a quiet, quiet and sociable pedestrian place where people can get together and, and enjoy the benefits of the traditional city center. The city administration commissioned the project of urban transformation, one could, almost, could only say beautification of the Prescian Square to the one of the leading art architects of the post-war area to the professor Edward, Edward Raunikar Sr. He designed the project pretty much similar to what we have now at Prescian Square, with one big exception. He also conceived, uh, uh, conceived and designed a new element in the square, George, the fountain, that would re represent the transition of the square from the noisy and chaotic place I was talking about to a quiet and social one. The fountain should also underline the importance of the urban water and somehow upgrade the concept of the three bridges by famous uh, Josef Plechnik. <coughs> Yet the reconstruction was in the delay. The people started to ask, what is going on? What is happening? The rumors of all kinds started to spread. People became, became concerned. The square was practic practically impossible to, to cross, the access to stores, public services, and to the old marketplace, Tržnica, uh, was uh, impractical. Pedestrian routes were re redirected. Criticism started to spread throughout the newspapers and among the public. Amazingly, in these times, the city administration responded to, a, to public concern in a transparent way. What they did is that they displayed the project in the shop windows of the nearby store. As far as I remember, it was a store uh, they were selling the women's underwear. Uh, nearby store, they even presented a model of the fountain in the real size and measures, though only half of it, the other symmetrical, symmetrical part, was left to your imagination. Here I have to admit uh, and add that this half model of, of the fountain was very purely manufactured by wood, and uh, actually it, it uh, served more as argument against the fountain as uh, the argument for the fountain. This was the uh, very unhappy circumstances. Uh, additionally, uh, city administration invited the people to respond, to, re to render their impressions, their comments, and proposals. And then it started, an avalanche. In some 10 days, more than 3,000 
more likely 4,000 comments were written down in three thick notebooks. It was not just a source, one line. There were also one-liners, but there has been stories of a half a page and so on and so on. And what the comments? They were overwhelmingly against the proposed renovation of Prussian Square, and particularly against the erection of the fountain at the square. But these comments were very much more than just that. They were sort of general outrage concerning the situation in the country at the end of the 80s, and the Pershing Square uh, renewal was only a case in point, a case where all social and political, cultural frustration has been actually condensed. So we can, when we speak as, about the space, so we, we should know what we're speaking about. We can speak also of, uh, on, such a issue, on such issues as I mentioned just now. The city administration was literally shocked. And uh, what they got from the people's response, uh, uh, they didn't know what to do with them. They asked me and my colleague, Professor Dragokos, to analyze them. We quickly realized that we cannot read and understand these comments at a simple narrative level. The comments are some sort of a meta-narrative referring to how the people of Ljubljana understand the square and the city, what they hold dear, uh, what the square means to them in a context that has been already described. It would take me too far to, in explaining all this, I can only say now that we organized uh, with, uh, with cost comments in some sort of semantic registers that is relatively, that is relatively homogenic semantic fields that allows uh, classification of the comments and also interpretation. Uh, le among others, we identify the following fields. There, we identify some seven seven, eight uh, different these registers, but for the sake of this lecture, I uh, limit myself only to, to four of them. Among these, uh, we identified the, the image of the architect. How uh, is perceived the image of the architect through all these comments? Architect appears as a sinner, scapegoat versus an architect as a saint, as an idol. The sinner, architect as a sinner, was of course Professor Raunicker, who wanted to, by his project, to de-evaluate the Pletschnik's work and to surpass him as the most uh, uh, famous Slovenian architect. In, uh, through the eyes of these comments that attacked uh, Raunicker was simply to say, Raunicker project demonstrates a malicious ambition of the architect to write himself into a history at the cost of idol of Pechnik. The architect is basically perce perceived as creator, but the path from the saint idol Pechnik to the sinner Raunicker to, is to be, uh, seems to be very short. The figure of Raunicker served as a scapegoat to whom all the fury was directed. Is something wrong with this place? Look at the ar architect who designed it. The image, the second uh, uh, su such register was the image of the Prussian Square. It is obviously that commentators with a great majority, overwhelming majority opposed to any intervention that would redraw the spatial arrangement of the square or the right spatial arrangement of the square, and particularly to give, uh, to try to give some new elements to the square, such as a fountain. Fountain has been, as a new element that would be added to the square, it was, has been pursued, that potentially jeopardize the nom dominant status uh, or monument uh, the dominant monument of the Slovenian greatest poet, Franz Fountain was in the eyes of the commentators 
no less than a cultural revolution, which is meant to dethrone the iconic figure of the poet, and by that, uh, uh, the Slovenian history and the symbolic meaning of the square itself. It's amazingly that reading the, uh, how uh, people com uh, in comments perceive the, the symbolic meaning of the space of the Presciano Turkeys, they did, not, they did not rely on visual, architectural, urban qualities of the space it uh, obviously has. They relied not so much on, on, on the urban configuration of the space, but much more on the status, on the letter, on the poet. The, the sim symbolism of the Bersheno Turk is basically not bound to the space, to the physical uh, presence, but actually to the letter, to the word of the poet. And uh, of course, uh, fountain appears uh, as a strange element. It has been pursued as an object that does not belong to the square. There are comments in the sense that wa water does not go with water, with river, with Ljubljana, which is obviously false, which is obviously not true. Uh, there were also nationalistic uh, notions, as for example, why fountain <coughs> that the Bosnians will wash their feet in it, and that the, the beggars will assemble there, and so on. One comment was very resolute. If there is, if there is a fountain, there is going to be a bomb. And there is also ideology of modesty, morality, hygienism, moralism, uh, in terms of why spend money for such things, why shouldn't we plant a linden tree is Slovenian and is cheap, uh, why, why uh, uh, don't, uh, not, uh, fountain, fountains should not be there, pigeons will uh, worsen the hygienic uh, uh, relations uh, in the city, and so on, and so on, and so on. There's a lot of, of, of all, all this. I, unfortunately, uh, we could go on and on with, with all this com reading all these comments and commenting them, but most of the comments are practically untranslatable, and a lot uh, of the meaning would be lost with the translation. It's worthwhile to mention that, the, that there were a lot of comments on comments, and polemics and a lot of irony. Uh, actually, the notebooks served as sort of a graffiti wall where uh, one comment has provoked another comment and, and polemics and so on. And uh, so to speak, we will say that, the, that these uh, notebooks uh, have been functioning uh, in a way as a modern, modern day social networks, as Facebook, for example. There were some comments responding also to the public lynching, lynching of the architect Raunicker. Uh, and uh, they tried to, to say or to, to, uh, to argue that uh, not everything that is new uh, is, uh, and, uh, is different, and different is bad at the place, that progress should happen, new things should come, and so on and so on. Uh, but uh, these comments were in a, a strong minority. Certainly, I can say at the end of uh, all this that, that the Presciano Square renewal was, was the publi public issue in those days and at that time. If we approach the conclusion, I owe you, of course, the message I drew for, uh, from this case and uh, the message I would like to share with you. This is certainly the message of the failed encounter in reading the city of Ljubljana and Persian Square between city administration and the architects on the one side and the citizens of Ljubljana on the other side. Why such misreading, such failed encounter happened and how it happened? Why? relatively 
so to speak, non-pretentious intervention in the square caused such a, a great outrage and denial. Obviously, as we can see while reading the comments, Pershing Square is heavily symbolically charged place. Pershing Square does not only represent itself as a valuable urban space, but stand as a significant signifier of the city of Ljubljana at large. It is the place of the symbolic identification of, of the citizens of, of Ljubljana as the citizens of Ljubljana. To be, so to speak, I am, I am Ljubljanian, if you want to, Ljubljanites, Ljubljana, let's say, I'm Ljubljanian as much as I share the same values and invest the same meaning in Pershing Square as other fellow Ljubljanians do. Thus, the values and meanings, the sense of place, is linked to the great poet, such a, uh, to link to great poet present uh, ideas such as national identity, grace, stubbornness, tradition, culture, self-confidence, and this, uh, these meanings are written in physical space and arrangement of the Prussian Square. Therefore, if such a failed encounter happens, the in inevitable follows. Anyone who intervenes in the, symboli in the symbolism uh, of the place by re reconfiguring the spatial arrangement, by adding, or for that matter, taking, taking away new visual spatial elements, intervenes in the heart of the citizens, in their symbolic identification, which links them to the place they live and to the other citizens. It simply tackles, tackles them as they are, as they see themselves as they are. Well, there are not so many places as much symbolically charged as this one, but the same mechanisms are observable, observable elsewhere, maybe not in such magnitude. And let me say the final, final words. If you intervene in such, this is a, addressed to the architects of all, of all kind and of all sorts, if you intervene in a, such symbolically charged and complex places, and you rely primarily on your visual, artistic, and professional way of seeing the space, you might misread the message, messages, and you live a very dangerous life as an architect or urban politicians, for that matter. Thank you very much.